everybody. It's the A to Z podcast, short edition, playoff victory edition. Uh, as always, it's seen Honeymoon Grill, American Fireworks, who've helped make this happen. To all of you guys who have been listening for a long time, who remember not all that long ago in real world terms, us throwing a parade after Johnny Manziel played in Pittsburgh. Remember, we had the 21 guns. And we had the lowest of the low bars for one of the worst human beings to ever grace and how people got excited about that. This one's for all of you. Um, I only got 15 or 20 minutes. This is our time to do it. I'm just back from Pittsburgh. It's a fun kind of busy, Dre. It's a good kind of busy. Um, I'll say this about American Fireworks and about all of you guys listening. (laughs) As soon as our buddy Springer texted or tweeted i i hear fireworks i said well i know where they got them for one and for two i am not the least bit surprised no there was noise all around me and that's not a big deal where i live gunshots and fireworks are kind of synonymous uh <laughs> they both were probably going off last night to say the least um so duck you come by my crib and make sure you i'm not gonna make any of those comments what a night what a moment what a night um to be completely honest, I don't. Zach doesn't have a lot of time. I, we want to make this right. I wanted to get this in here. I want to do another one later on in the week. We obviously have Ohio State playing Alabama tonight. Um, get over yourselves for people like there's some asshole and you're an asshole. And I said it. You know, if you don't know about the language, that's how we talk here. We're talking about a Browns went over the Steelers, so the word asshole should be used a lot. Um, stop texting us and tweeting us about. Well, you make bakers this or that. I'm going to give you 100% the reason why after week six, Baker was average to me and to many others, and not just people on this podcast, but people around the league because of decision-making and because he didn't see things that you need a big-time quarterback to see. And Jake Burns, and I know it's now been written about Peter King and everything else, and I had a good night last night, and I drank some of the finest bourbons that you could find. <laughs> but something in, my, something in my fat belly and in my brain showed up at halftime when I saw that touchdown to Jarvis Landry, it clicked something in my mind, Zach. I go, that looks familiar. And it was familiar because if you remember after the Browns played at Heinz Field back in, what was that, October? October yeah, mid- six, week six, I mid-October. Yeah. Mid-October. Mid-October, I said, I can, and you can go back and listen to the podcast, little Mikey, first five beers are on me when we're allowed to be normal again, so 2024. He'll find it. If you can't find it, look up little Mikey on Twitter. You can go off of it and you can hear everything I said or Zach said after that first Steelers game, the problems that Baker Mayfield had as a quarterback at the time. I stand there. I won't go away from that. But I will commend him. I take my hat off. I tip it to him. And as you young kids say, I'm going to give him his flowers today on this glorious January day in Northeast Ohio. Because the Steelers tried to trap him early again in a game just like they did back in October. And he read it the right way this time Zachary Jackson and he found the right receiver at the right time this time it was Jarvis Landry the last time it should have been Odell Beckham Jr. he missed the read Minka Fitzpatrick goes back 40 yards game over and I remember saying after that that podcast and I'm saying to you there's not many times Zach that one play can change or win a game where you can look at one play and say yeah it was over after this when he threw that interception way back when just because momentum and all those other words that we use that, that, that we cannot, can't put our fingers on. The game was over because that was a big game. They went in there and thought they had a chance. And same old Browns was playing five minutes into the game after the kickoff because he didn't read the Minka Fitzpatrick Robert. He read it last night, Zach. And that touchdown to me, that, the, touch, the touchdown I'm talking about made it 14-0. Obviously, Ben Roethlisberger being too old to bend over care or give a shit helped him get the lead. Um, Because that was ridiculous that he didn't get dirty. And if it was any other quarterback that hadn't played for this long, we'd be killing him today. But that's nor here nor there. Um, Baker read something that the Steelers, and I said this back back weeks ago, the Steelers have made that robber defense, whether it be with Troy Palomalu, whether it be with Carnell Lake, whether it be now with Mika Fitzpatrick, it is one of the the keys to their defense for year after year on third down plays. They will bring that safety underneath on your on your and play the sticks and either knock your quarterback or knock your receiver's head off or return it for a touchdown. Baker read it right, went to the next level. Who knew Jarvis Landry could outrun anybody for 40 yards, but he did. Um, and to me, there's a lot of other plays, Zach. There's a lot of other things that we'll talk about. There's a lot of other things we'll remember. But for me, I couldn't go to sleep last night. And shout out to Jake Burns, who breaks down plays and 
he should be coaching somebody. He should be coaching somewhere because he's good at breaking down the fundamental parts of plays. And I give I give credit where credit's due. I know it's not for everybody. Some are football nerds. Some just like watching it and getting drunk. I like doing both. But to me, those are the little things that when we talk about being nerdy about football, if the Browns are going to go anywhere, you have to get better and you have to learn from your mistakes. Baker Mayfield, you learn from your mistakes. And now you're one of the last eight quarterbacks standing in the NFL. I, I give you your flowers today. I absolutely beautiful. agree with you, except for one thing. That game was over after the first play. James Conner well, yeah. and Ben Roethlisberger could not be bothered to recover the fumble. Right. Oh, that, that, that's know. the story. The Steelers show up completely unready. They cannot be bothered to recover the fumble that he torpedoes 30 yards over the guy's head. Take it and punt. Yeah. Take the two points there. Give seven. Kick it out the back. Anything. Yes. Right. Kick the ball. Right. Take the two. Anything. Anything. Look. The Browns are clearly alone. They're a different team than they were back in mid-October. They're a different team than they were in mid-November. They are playing really well. They bullied the Steelers. They ended the Steelers. They dominated the Steelers. Their deficiencies showed up. They gave up record pass attempts and yards, but they picked them off four times, right? The little chance that the Steelers had, Mike Tomlin gave away by being completely unprepared. He matched... The, the Steelers weren't prepared in the first team. quarter. Mike Tomlin had no feel for the game. It goes out on the window. All the things we talk about about coaching and culture and being ready and all that, when the game starts, like, you have to adjust on the fly. You have to think on your feet, right? The Browns kept going for the jugular. They kept getting it. And, look, uh, I'm not going to rain on anyone's parade. You guys want to try to make it personal with us. You want to try to act like what I tweet and say has anything to do with anything. I want to act like what Juju Smith-Schuster said has anything to do with anything. We didn't think the Browns could win the game. We didn't. We were wrong. What did we I say, Dre? Three did. things got to happen. The defense has to force a bunch of turnovers. Running backs yep. have to dominate. Jarvis Landry has to have that monster Jarvis Landry game. We didn't think all three could happen. We were wrong. All I three did. happened. All three we were, I, I mean, happened. Right. You're absolutely right. They, they hit everything how they had to hit it. And you've said this about tournament play. From the beginning hot of this team. podcast. The beginning hot of the team. Hot team. And you said something. The Browns are a better team than the Steelers, and they have been for the last six, eight weeks. Yeah. Um, and, and every problem the Steelers have had at the end of the season, the Browns exposed last night. And I give Kevin Stefanski so much credit. I don't know how the hell he did that last night. I know I couldn't do it. I know I woke up my kids left and right. Um, but how he's prepared these, this team and how he's prepared these guys. Um, and, I, and, and Joe Woods. It wasn't perfect, and I know some people bitch about, you know, going prevent, but you would bitch just as much if they gave up a touchdown in under two minutes if they were if they were playing man-to-man up in their face. That's right. It's how teams play. It's how teams play. Um, and, and I think I think it's, it's easy for us sitting at home to talk about momentum and talk about how you got to come out in the second half like you came out in the first half. All those things are easy, but these are human beings, people. And I, all it hit me was this team hasn't practiced in two weeks. They came out and played the half of their life. If you think they got that same juice for 30 more minutes, you're out of your mind. <laughs> there was no way they were going to come out yeah, in the second, second, right. the second like, half and play the same well, What do we just say? They're laying the game plan and doing and believing in what you believe in and implementing things is one thing, right? But then you have to go as it go. You have to adjust. You have to make the right call at the right time. You have to feel the game, right? That's why right. no two-point chart is always accurate. No fourth down go for a wow. chart is always accurate. No run the trick play at this time is always right because it, you have to feel the game. Um, and it's the same with bunts. It's the same with bunts, people. Bunts in baseball. Yes. They're okay sometimes. They're okay sometimes. Yeah. Stop bitching about it. Right. Please, um, let me say one thing. Let me, okay. say, whoa, whoa, whoa. let me say one thing. You're right, but you're a little wrong about Juju. Juju Smith-Schuster is a quality player, but – he learned from Antonio Bryant of how to be a complete asshole and adult me. Antonio guy, Brown, you, you mean? Let, let's not be Brown. desecrating That's the a, name of my, my man, oh, Antonio no, no, Bryant. My bad. my bad, Antonio Bryant. I don't want no beef. Speed up three brothers in one time. I don't want. Let, let, let me interrupt here. Let me just say this. <laughs> We've told this story <laughs> on the podcast before, and luckily we weren't there to document it, but we got it on good authority that one time Antonio yeah. Bryant was on a date. 
and four dudes jumped him. And he beat up the first three. So go ahead. And he beat up the first three. And that's a true story. So Antonio Bryant, love you. I'm sorry. I, I, I Ass and elbows. I remember that's what your quote was. Ass and elbows. I want no beef. All I'm saying is this, Zach. We've seen it now in the college ranks. And, yes, you have to be prepared. You have to play. It's not like you could have dressed me up and Coach Borman and, and four of our friends, and as soon as you made fun of us, we would have won. But there's no re- reason to give other teams – any other reason to, you know, bulletin board stuff, it's there. I mean, does Bill Belichick put bulletin board stuff up if you say something stupid about the Patriots? Yes. But is that the reason why they beat you? Right. No, but it is something that motivate. It is something that motivates you to pay a little bit more attention to all the details. While Juju's calling them the great faceless face mask guys, you got a team full of people with COVID, no coach and everything else. And they're going, all right, asshole, we got to sit in the hotel rooms. And we can't do nothing. We're going to think about that little stupid dance and that little stupid song. I mean, we saw Dabo do it. We Hopefully, hopefully, we see Nick Saban's daughter do it. And I, and I think we've seen Juju do it because he got the Bengals and the Browns to kick his ass well, all within a month. I'll give you this. And we've been saying this all along. This is where we got one right, right? The Browns have been adults this whole yes. season. At least the back half of the season, right? How they've handled yes. unprecedented mess. How different guys from Rashard Higgins, who's proven to be an NFL player, to MJ Stewart and Michael Dunn, whoever the hell they are, right, have, have stepped MJ in. MJ Stewart gets love. MJ Stewart gets love. Yeah, no, he and he about, and he right? deserves it. Um, to Stefanski to do that and have those guys ready for them to go through what they went through and go dominate that team. Look, if Pouncey don't want to play football no more, the Steelers got no chance. Nah, <laughs> the Browns came nah. in. The Browns came in and said, we are here. We showed up for a fight, and the Steelers did not show yep. up for a fight. They, they did not. Did what, what, what I say all last week, the Browns can't cover Chase Claypool. This is going to be a problem. What did he do in the first yep. three quarters, Jay? Nothing. 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 I, did, you hear Cam Hayward, did you hear Cam Hayward's name last night? I didn't. No. I, Mike, I didn't, Michael I, I, Dunn, like, like, former practice squad player, undrafted, University of Maryland. One offensive snap all year as a tackle, played left guard in place of Joel Batonio, one of the best to ever do it. Michael Dunn practiced last week in his apartment complex, went outside, had his girlfriend call out the plays, and he came out of his stance in the snow in the parking lot to practice his steps and his punches because the Browns couldn't have practice. He went back in the apartment and watched every snap that Cameron Hayward played all year long. Did you hear Cameron Hayward's name last night? I did not. That's good research right there. He gets hurt. That's good research. That's why right. we come to you. That's so why we use action. Let, action. let me say this. I'm not going to get into it. I'm as happy as hell for all you guys. We appreciate you reading, listening, tweeting, telling us you like it. Do not tweet me during the games and tell me not to tweet something. If you ever use the word narrative with me, you're auto-blocked. If you ever tell me what I should or shouldn't tweet, you're auto-blocked. That's what it is. It's my, it's my Twitter account. I own that right. Get a grip. Be an adult. Enjoy it. Laugh. Cry. Hug. Tie it to your father. Tie it to your childhood memories. Get ready. Save all your money and go to the season opener. It's going to cost all the money you got to get in that bitch. Right? And it's fun. The Browns are fun. Again, the Browns are back. But get a grip. The game is not played on Twitter. And to the person who tweeted this morning and said, well, that's all fine, Dre. But what about what about when Zach said that Baker's a C quarterback? What, what about that? Yeah. Listen, let me tell yeah. you directly, anonymous person, your girlfriend was not that good in October either. Okay? I mean that. Ah! Little Zachary didn't get sleep, and he's like, fuck all of y'all. I want it. That's right. Go. So I listen. So, so, <laughs> so I didn't think the Browns could win, and I'm impressed as hell that they did. And I'm impressed with Alex Van Pelt, and I already said MJ Stewart and Michael Dunn and Jarvis Landry I cannot say enough about. And you couldn't be happier for the J.C. Treaders, right? Sheldon Richardson, yeah. um, guys that have been through it. You know, Sandejo stinks. Good. He's out there battling his ass off. Sheldrick Redwine can't get on the field. They put him out there. He battles his ass off, right? Like, I'm happy for all you guys. Here's another one that I got right. I said, well, first of all, I told you in October they were going to the playoffs, and you said no. But then you when did, it became I clear that they were probably going to go to the playoffs, I said, we said, we both said, when they get there, man, they could score 40 and lay it on somebody, or they could give up 40 and get run off the field. 
Well, they did both, yep. and they won by double digits. Yeah. Um, first of all, J.C. Treader is the new Bill Russell of fucking football. Uh, I think he coached them played last yes. night because they don't got no damn offensive line coach. So God bless J.C. Treader for what he was able to do and help Michael Dunn and the guys that they had. Um, I will say this, and those as we're all reaching around and, and giving ourselves something on the back, Rob, Dennis, I love you, you two Steeler fans who I love giving hell to for six weeks. And I said on this podcast when I first did it, they wanted to fight me. I've been telling them that the Steelers were going to host and lose the first weekend of the playoffs, and all they were going to get was a stupid T-shirt. And that's exactly what happened, and it felt so damn good. But I got to say this. Forget about all that. You talk about You said Sheldon Richardson, Miles Garrett. Um, it's, I know it's the corny narrative, and you hear it from me every time. And you can go through your phone, Mr. I like bragging about how many people text me during the Browns game, and I don't answer because I'm so pretty, uh, because I'm so fake busy. Um, I text <laughs> you guys. It was 14 to nothing, and I saw the offensive line blow the Steelers' defensive line off the line. Right. And I think I text you guys, it's fucking over. And, I, and I, you know I don't – and I'm not the type to say that. or to, But I, I can just see, offensive line, defensive line-wise, the Browns kicked the Steelers. You said it already. They bullied them. But they bullied him in the part where it's Harper, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andre not Zach Jackson to truly tell you or show you during the game. But, Zach, I can go back to that Jets game. And I don't know the difference. And, it, and, it, and the opponent matters. The motivation matters. Like, the Jets played a certain way knowing the Browns didn't have their four wide receivers. And despite management not giving a shit about them at all, they had some pride. And they went out and kicked the Browns offensive line's butt that week. And maybe the Browns took them lightly. But the Browns got their ass kicked on the line of scrimmage the last two weeks, Zach. And we had a lot of conversations about why was Stefanski only running Chubb 14 times last week? Why didn't they run so much when they were in New York against the Jets the week before that? And I know at times I was like, well, they hadn't practiced a lot. And the way their line functions and the way they need to play that, that zone blocking, you do need to practice. You do need reps. Now, in saying all of that, Cam Hayward got the week off the week before. Watt didn't make a lot of noise. Um, last night, he had the week off the week before. The Browns didn't kill at the line of scrimmage against the Steelers at the stadium last week. But when they walked into that stadium yesterday, whether it was Michael Dunn or the guy that just showed up in the Renaissance like two days ago, they had to come in for a couple snaps. They played their ass off, and they beat some, I don't want to say Hall of Fame defensive linemen, but Hayward's going to be, he'll he'll be on a ballot. They beat him at the line of scrimmage, Zach, on both sides. They did. Castro. Got, the Castro got destroyed uh, most of the night. Uh, we saw with their center, who's been a all pro center multiple times. He didn't play a great game. The little name was done, son. I don't, yeah. you know. Dang it, I was just about to say, let me go full on during that and tell you what the Steelers are. They're done, son. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're exactly done, right. Son. And here's the other thing I noticed from being at the game. There's a hundred ways to throw an interception, and all of us who have watched the Browns for the last 20 years know all hundred of them, right? Sometimes it's a great defensive play. Sometimes a ball gets tipped. Sometimes the guy's supposed to catch it. Sometimes the guy runs the wrong route. Sometimes the quarterback just doesn't see. Hell, we've seen it. We already talked about the first playoff game or the first game this year. Brown Steelers. Right. Minka stood there. Baker never saw him, right? Yep. But yep. that first interception last night, Ben's body language before, during, and after the throw – Told me everything yep. I needed to know. He had he no business, no business throwing that ball there. He was giving up. He was saying, "I don't." More so than not picking up the fumble, he was saying, "I have no interest in being here." When the door yeah. is open, well, you, you got to kick it down, and the Browns did. You know they owe him forty million dollars next year. I don't yeah. know if you can give him forty million, forty-one million dollars. I think they owe. Yeah. Him well, Colbert and Tom are going to call him to the office, and you know what they're going to say? You done, son. <laughs> i'm glad we got to this and i really have to go in three minutes we tell you guys all the okay. time the truth is in the middle it's never one play never one game never one moment ben won a super bowl ben is a steelers icon ben is a no doubt hall of famer who's had a great career you don't get to write your own ending it's ending awfully the cleveland browns who were not ben's stepchild they were his actual son for 17 fucking years, they officially ended Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers last night. Konnichiwa, Big Ben. And don't let anybody forget about what he was really about 10 years ago. 
I don't want to say all the words, but I'll never, never mind. Bye, Ben. See you on the other side. Hopefully you'll be on TV. Never Talk forget. Never forget that Butch Davis put Frisman Jackson and Andre King on a plane. <laughs> flew him to Oxford, Butch Ohio, had him work out with Ben. <laughs> Sent him home later that day and didn't draft Ben Roethlisberger. Never forget that until Calibre. November of 2020, Ben Roethlisberger was the winningest starting quarterback in First Energy Stadium until Baker passed him. Yeah. Now Baker's dancing. Now Baker's in, enjoying it. Baker earned it. Baker didn't play a perfect game. He didn't need to. He was an adult. He kept drives alive. He found Jarvis yeah. when the Steelers tried to cover him with a linebacker. He found Jarvis in other spots. He played an A game. He delivered. Um, it's going to take 40. They can score 40. I don't know if they can hold him under okay. 50. I'll just say this. We'll get out of here on one story. Uh, again, your longtime listener, we appreciate you. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors and supporting Dre's Wife's Foundation and, and everything that we yeah. do, even when you don't agree with us, even when you want to talk shit with us, even all that stuff. We like it. It's fun. Um, you might remember a couple of years ago, Coach France from Manchester, my high school principal, someone who's very close to me. Um, he just retired last year after 49 years as the head coach at, at my high school alma mater. What was it three years ago, Dre, when he set the record? We had him on the podcast. It's an all timer. Yeah. Go back and, and listen. But he, anyway, he only, he, only, he only broke the record three times because they can't count Manchester. Go ahead. Yeah, he's. He just retired. He's going on eighty years old, um, and he he was a he was an old school. You know, his coaching idol was Woody Hayes. He once won a regional championship game by running for five hundred sixty yards and not attempting a single pass. It was that was football porn for him, right? So, um, last night during the third quarter, when the Steelers finally got a couple stops and the, and the Browns were were searching for a first down, and some traction, I tweeted something to the effect of. I know Jim France went to sleep three hours ago, but if he was awake right now, he, he would be saying run the ball. Well, I don't know if it was his son or his grandson or someone else sent him the tweet. So I looked down at my phone at the next TV timeout, and there's a text from Big Jim. It says, and it says, I'm wide awake, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Even Big Jim stayed up last night. That's how great it was. Oh, so, I love that story. I we'll do it. a full podcast later in the week for this idiot, for my idiot partner. Enjoy it. You've all earned it. It's supposed oh, to be fun. Yeah. And gosh darn it, it is. We'll talk to you soon. Can you see why I'm big fat man, you fat mother? Please. <laughs>